Welcome to Spreadsheet Geek. This video will cover the Schiller PE ratio, also known as the cyclically adjusted PE ratio or CAPE ratio. By the end of the video, you'll understand why this ratio is a very good predictor of future US stock market returns. This video was made using Microsoft Excel 2019. Robert Schiller is a 2013 Nobel Prize winner in economic sciences. He's well known for his work in asset pricing as well as behavioral finance. One of his biggest contributions is the cyclically adjusted PE, also known as the Schiller PE ratio. Most of us are familiar with the price earnings ratio. It's the price of an asset divided by the annual earnings that asset can produce on either a forward or a trailing basis. In general, the higher the PE multiple, the higher the risk of that asset being inflated. But that being said, assets with a high growth rate in earnings probably deserve a higher price earnings multiple. Robert Schiller looked at the price earnings multiple on a one-year trailing basis and he saw a problem with it. Both the price in the numerator and the earnings in the denominator are highly cyclical and cyclical periods in the markets can last years. What Schiller set out to do with his team of people was to create a cyclically adjusted PE for the entire U.S. stock market. He decided to use the S&P 500 as his U.S. stock market pricing index. But the S&P 500 as we know it today only goes back to 1957. To go all the way back to 1871, Schiller in effect constructed his own S&P composite index from the best available data he had. His data went down to the company level and included both earnings and dividends for each index component. Once he had all of his prices, earnings, and dividends for his index components, he adjusted all of the numbers for inflation using the consumer price index. That way you could compare a price earnings multiple from 1980 to one from 1890. Since all of his numbers were adjusted for inflation, he could go back 10 years instead of just one and average the last 10 years results to create the Schiller PE ratio, also known as the cyclically adjusted PE or CAPE ratio, and also known simply as the PE10. Since the Schiller PE ratio is a 10-year average, it smooths out a lot of the short-term extremes we might see in earnings or prices. The methodology Schiller applied to the S&P Composite Index could be applied to any stock market index if you have the index data and a reference to inflation. You can download your very own copy of Robert Schiller's work at this web address. And it comes out in Excel form if you click on this link right here. You can get all of the data from 1871 to present. This data is updated every month. Let's take a look at it. The workbook has several worksheets in it. This first one is a disclaimer and there's some plots, but I'm going to skip over to the data tab. He uses a rather unusual date format. This is 1871, first month or January, second month and so on down the line. He's got his S&P composite price in the next column, dividends, earnings, and keep in mind dividends always come out of earnings. Then he's got this consumer price index and he uses these columns of information to compute a real price for his index, real earnings, and these are real total return prices and total return earnings. But the real important column here is column M, the cyclically adjusted PE ratio or PE10. Now you have to go down 10 years or 120 months to get to your first one, but you'll see that was 1881 January. We have a Schiller PE ratio of 18.47, and that is the product of 
10 years worth of real earnings in the denominator and a real price for his index computed in column H. If you listen to enough Robert Schiller, you'll probably hear him at some point talk about the cyclical nature of earnings. We're all familiar with fluctuating asset prices in the numerator. Home prices can fluctuate, stock market prices, commodity prices all fluctuate quite a bit. But we may not really think too much about earnings fluctuating. Corporate earnings are very cyclical, and that's often one of Robert Schiller's big points in his talks. How often have you seen companies' profits projected into the future only going up? We're optimistic planners, and we never expect the recession to hit next year. But this is not reality. We're in a recession about one-third of the time. To show how much earnings fluctuate, I'm going to go back to 1871 and chart the earnings. I'm going to reselect my dates for this axis. And we'll put a name on the chart. That is certainly not a straight line. There are highly cyclical periods in corporate earnings. The rest of the video will focus on the Schiller P.E. ratio as a predictor of the future. We don't know what the future holds, but the Schiller P.E. is a pretty good predictor. It can be used to better position yourself for the future in your investing. One of the things Schiller included on his data was the real 10-year annualized return. This is the subsequent 10-year return after the date of this Schiller P.E. If I were to highlight one of these rows, March of 2009, you can see that the CAPE or PE10 reached a, a low in that month of 13.32. During the subsequent 10-year period, the S&P Composite Index experienced a very favorable 13.39% annualized return. This high level of annualized return coupled with a very low Schiller P.E. would lead one to believe that these two things are inversely correlated. When one's low, the other's quite high. Let's graph that and then measure the correlation using Excel's Corel function. I'm going to build a two-axis chart. I'm almost done. One thing I forgot to do is add a legend. This is probably the easiest way to do that up here. So we have the Schiller PE in blue and then the subsequent 10-year average annualized return in red. You'll notice that when the Schiller PE is low, the subsequent 10-year return tends to be high and vice versa here. So these are fairly well inversely correlated with one another. Another way to show the same thing is with a scatter plot. In this one I've got the Schiller PE here on the horizontal axis 
with the 10 year subsequent annualized return on the vertical axis. You can see we've got a pretty strong correlation here. The last thing I'd like to do in this video is show how to use the correlation function. And we'll measure the correlation between this cyclically adjusted PE ratio and the 10 year annualized real stock return that followed. I'm gonna go ahead and hide these columns because they're more or less a distractor at this point. I'd like to do this for a couple different uh, periods of time, but the first one we'll do is for all the data we have from 1881 to present. The correlation function asks for two arrays. <clears throat> now we have to back this up 10 years because we don't know the next 10 years. And then you fill in the next correlation. So that's a correlation of 0.54. And I'm going to go ahead and count these 129 to 1688 just to see how many pairs we have. And that's 1,540 pairs of data. So I went through that same exercise with a couple other time periods for the post-World War II period, and I've got that as January 1st, 1946 to present. The correlation with negative one being perfectly negatively correlated, it tightened up a little bit from uh, the, the entire data range and then loosened up a little bit in the 1957 to present period, which is kind of the period where we had an S&P 500 index that's much as we have it today, 500 companies. The period from 1980 to present, and that was just arbitrary the last 40 years, is very good at negative 0.89. Again, negative one would be a perfect negative correlation. There's just one more thing I'd like to talk about in this video. This website, gurufocus.com slash Schiller PE, tracks the Schiller PE ratio on a minute by minute, actually updated every 10 minutes when the market's open. So this is an up to the minute reading. The 20 year low is 13.3, that matches up with our data, and the high for the last 20 years is today. And today is February 12th, as I'm recording this, we are at uh, the all-time 20-year high. And they actually have some methodology where they calculate the implied future annual return. And they've stated that at 0.3%. That would be a 10-year subsequent period, just like we had in our examples. If you scroll down, Further in this website, you can actually get the Schiller PE by sectors. And this is something I look at fairly often to, just to keep a gauge on where we are with the Schiller PE valuation. I hope you found the content of this video interesting and informative and you subscribe to my channel. If not, throw me a thumbs up and please feel free to post a comment. Thank you for visiting Spreadsheet Geek.